Hey world, welcome. Thank you for being here. And I want to talk today about what it takes to be a nonprofit. Chronicles of a nonprofit. Who today? Today is April 21st, not 2003, but 2023. You know, sometimes we have to be very mindful of the things that happen in our world. Um, sometimes things can take us back at a time and a place in which we had no recollection or understanding of the growth that we endured in our lives. And sometimes people's energy can take us back there too. That can make us very, very uh, emotionally, uh, emotionally driven. You know, sometimes we can even cry about the things that we experienced when we've put our work in, our blood, sweat, and tears, honey. And then you have people that may want to come along and take what's yours. Some people call that the mentality of the past, the things that we've experienced in the past. And we're supposed to forget about the past not knowing that the past is a very thing that defines us. Sometimes we have to walk alone. Sometimes we may be the only one believing in who we are. And that's the very key that keeps us focused. So for those individuals trying to learn to, to uh, create a nonprofit from a passion in which you possess for yourself, you know, be very mindful that it is a lonely place. Um, you will find individuals who come along every now and again that stick with you, that stick and stay. And, you know, I can go back to the very first individual that showed up at my nonprofit and extended a hand to me. It was really emotional because the connection had to do with losing a loved one and that loved one being the very one that brought this gentleman to me. And this gentleman that showed up was there and he stayed there with me until the day that he passed away. You know, one thing about a nonprofit is that you really and truly find especially when you're working with community, you really and truly find those real diamonds in your community that most people, you know, the haters, the, the you know, people that everybody seem to always draw attention to talk about, prevent us from realizing that there were some diamonds that we found in the rough, you know, <laughs> So shout out to Mr. James Carter. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for being so wonderful in the process, helping us with our window project, helping us to promote football and inspire young men. This gentleman came into our location in 2019 and he stayed until 2020 until, you know, um, he got sick and, you know, he moved on into the life, into living beyond what we know here in this, in this level of consciousness. So he, James Carter, is a very prominent part of my nonprofit journey he taught me a lot, and one thing that James Carter taught me was to never be afraid of the situation and the circumstance, and that someone will always be there to support, to empower, to imp inspire you, as long as you give them a reason to believe that you're worth being inspired, empowered. So... Shout out to JC. And then came another wonderful young man by the name of Taurus Hill. Wonderful man. 
showed up and was just like, I want to help. You know, what is there to do here? And I'm like, well, we can start out by taking out the trash. <laughs> and then I'll see you tomorrow. And then tomorrow became a week. A week became a month. A month became a year. And a year became many years. And I mean, we did some phenomenal work there. From cutting down bushes and and preventing, you know, the remnants of the state of Ohio's raccoon infestations and and groundhog infestations, we were able to make sure that we did what we needed to do to support, you know, those kids playing in the bushes, making sure that they did not get any rabies or anything like that that would hurt them. And then came a wonderful young lady by the name of Antoinette Douglas. She inspired us to, you know, she was there for the community beginning. Um, she actually promoted the, our adult day service. She was our very first activities coordinator, and we so thank her. We thank her so very much. See, these are wonderful people that came and made our community center who we have become. Um, we may not be liked by all, but I guarantee you, the ones that we've serviced they can really and genuinely say that we really did a job that focused on them. It had nothing to do with us. It was all God working through community. And so that's what I learned. Um, then moving into the next group of people in which I remember so vividly, Miss Joy Dixon came in and helped us learn how to make the smoothies. We would have smoothie days and it was fun. It was, you know, wonderful, especially during the time of COVID and the pandemic. And this was like years after, like I'd say a year after, like 22. Um, this was when she came in and she said, okay, let's bring our seniors back out. Let's get them started. Let's get them rocking and rolling again. Life is open the world has opened. Man has allowed the world to open again. And it's just amazing. You know, I was listening to a Walter Beasley interview, and he was talking about what he needs to do now that touring and um, doing big Coliseum shows are no longer available to society. So now what he's doing is learning how to do other things effectively that can be his bread and butter. So I found a, a lot of greatness in that whole Walter Beasley interview. And I love Walter Beasley because when you come into the Youngstown Community Center, you're going to find Walter Beasley. You're going to find him playing um, his music. His music is very vibrant in our halls because Walter Beasley is a favorite artist of mine, um, saxophonist. So, so after Joy Dixon and, and, uh, she also helped to pre to create the process of the vendor sale, get to know us vendor sale. So every year we do that and we are so grateful and we hope that Joy is listening and we want you to know that we love you very much. And I know you went on about your way and you did your thing. See, one thing about community, some people stay for the long haul. Some people, they move around. They get in where they fit in, come in for a brief moment, and then they leave out. But they're going to come back. They will come back, especially if you treat them right, <clears throat> especially if, and yes, I do have a very strict way of um, being a leader. I've been trained to be uh, 
a leader of, of essence, a leader of expectation, a leader of motivation. And sometimes it's harsh, especially when people don't understand that this is how it's ran and other people aren't the same. You know, leadership styles, that is, are very different. So as a, as a nonprofit, I would have to say that dealing with leadership, I think that it is very vital that we be community driven, but we do not falter or go away from our morals and our values and our ethics when it's about teaching or showing or everything should be consistent. Because one thing about people is they love order and they love organization. Okay, so the next person comes to mind, Miss Lily. Miss Lily, she is a wonderful part. <clears throat> Excuse me. She is a wonderful part of the Youngstown Community Center. Very, very fun. She's very peaceful. She's very to, di- to the point direct, but yet very, very fun. Very funny. <laughs> So I thank you, Miss Lily, for all you've done. You were there when we did our Night of Elegance with Eduardo Ramos, and he brought a whole entire community. And, you know, it was a beautiful time. Him and his wife, Alicia, wonderful people, his beautiful boys. I mean, he has done a great service for the Youngstown Community Center. He helped us with our very first vendor sale. So I so appreciate and thank you, thank you, thank you. And then that brings to mind, Mr. I'm going to skip over. No, I'm going to come back to where I'm at. So the power behind people is the ones that stand out to us or the ones that we really and truly remember. Because I can keep going on and on and on. All the beautiful people. All the beautiful people. But then I can go on and on and on of the people who were not so beautiful. That those people had to deal with the consequence and remnant behind rules and guidelines that were put into place because they chose not to be so nice and beautiful. And so in order to make it a valuable resource for all community members to enjoy, it has to be organized. It has to be structured. You know, you can't have cussing through the halls. You can't have, you know, ultimate disrespect of authority. You can't, or to authority. You can't do that. And that's not what the Youngstown community mission is, and we are a multifaceted program geared towards our community of a low to moderate income basis that can benefit from programming, events, opportunity, education. We're 21st century, we are. We are one of its kind although everyone has their passion and their truth and belief and what they want to give to community. But it's what what you do daily. And here on this Facebook page, you're going to truly find that. So it goes back to thanking Mr. OG. You know who you are. And your wife, Lynn, is wonderful, magnificent, um, We had a great sock hop. We thank you all for everything that was done again. When we have leadership and things and organizational structures in place, one of the very things we have to focus on is the rules and the guidelines that let us run this program so that no one can say that we did not do what we were supposed to do. So public health department can't come in and shut down something that's great. You know, sock hops for kids are wonderful. Wonderful. But being a nonprofit, these rules and these guidelines 
and what our board expects are all very pertinent. It's very pertinent. And it goes back to my girl, Antoinette. She came back after years. We kept in touch, yes. But she came back and she told me how much she appreciates the Youngstown Community Center. How much she appreciates the fact that, yes, these resources you gave me, they worked. Yes, I'm coming back to help. I'm coming back to support. Beautiful woman. And I thank you, Antoinette, for being there. And that brings to mind um, Well, I can't remember everybody's name. <laughs> I'm trying to go back. But um, I thank all the people who gave coats away for the, um, for the Christmas giveaways that we gave to the community and helping with the macaroni and cheese and the dressing for our Thanksgiving meal. Um, oh my God, it's just so many people and some of the names, they slip my mind, but the ones that stand out, they truly do stand out. I'm so, so very grateful. I'm grateful. And you'll see all the gratitude that I show on our Facebook page for those who come through. We very seldom have people choose not to be a part of the Facebook page um, timeline only because that's the right thing to do for, you know, a nonprofit. But I guess everybody doesn't need to know everything. But as far as our community members, our supporters, it is known that we're going to enjoy and embrace um, the Facebook page so that others can see the gratitude that is taken and the measures and the people we service so that they will see that this is not just self gratifying. There's nothing about um, helping community that's selfish. As a matter of fact, the only self gratification that should be received is the feeling that it feels good at the end of the day that someone could be helped someone who is in need. We thank, we thank. Oh my, Mr. Sherrod, SB, okay, for being there with us, you know? You were our first individual that walked into the Hope House through the Youngstown Community Center and we so greatly appreciate you. Mrs. Z, Mrs. Z. Oh, what's going on with you? <laughs> I hope you're all right. I haven't seen you in a while. I don't even know if you're still in town. But I do appreciate everything you've done. And I know there's been many a days that you may have looked at me as having been so harsh and rude and cruel because of the fact that I had to follow guidelines and procedures and protocol. But I do want to let you know that it wasn't personal. Not at all. Miss Catalina, <laughs> you know, there comes a time when people want to come to the community center and they want to benefit uh, by giving you their history, the things that they've been doing with their lives. And that's awesome. And that's great. But I'm one that if you talk about your past and it has reflected something that you did great. I'm going to tell you to shine and bring it out. Bring it back out. So Catalina was a chef and she did these straight, these beautiful empanadas. And she was one who wanted to get her um, item in Walmart grocery stores. So the, the, uh, empanadas and there was another one with the beans and the oh god I forgot 
However, she went on and she made it. She got her items into the grocery store. So Catalina, good looking girl, you did great. And yes, we had a lot of highs and lows because in order to be a true business, everything has to be in alignment. Because if not, things will come back to bite you in the butt. And yes, there are times and there's room for error. So don't think that you're going to get it right 100% of the time the first time. Again, I've been doing this since 2006. And yes, people tell me, lead the past in the past. I can't. That's where my greatest accomplishments are. <laughs> I have to bring them to the forefront. So anyway, moving right along. Oh, David, David. You know, when you called me, when you called me from the house and you asked me, you said, listen, I need a place to stay. You called me your angel. And I so appreciate that because there were many a times where I believe in just giving people a chance. Because if you give them a chance, they'll show you who they are. And when they show you who they are, believe them. I know you weren't able to say goodbye to me. I know you would not have wanted to say goodbye. So I know that's why you did what you did. And it's okay because you know why? I know when you come back, you're going to come back and see me. There is no goodbyes. You're going to come back and see me. And when you come back and see me, David, you're going to be that ultimate chef that took care of all the superstars. So I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to our meeting again. We will meet again. Ah, moving right along. Mr. Herbert. Oh my God. I so remember you. You came all the way from some Southern state and you're like, yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, and you were one to be able to get a car anytime you needed it. <laughs> Something happened. Oh, well, go get another car. <laughs> but I hope you're good. You know, I feel your energy. I feel your spirit. You brought me so much joy um, being over at the Hope House. Oh, my goodness. Daryl, my chucker. <laughs> wow. You, you, I miss a lot because you always kept the peace. You always keep the joy. You always kept your room cleaned and it always smelled great. <laughs> you know, um, ow, thank you. Thank you for teaching me a lot, teaching me, feeling the vibration of what happens when someone helps and really assists, and I don't know why, you always said, well, why is it so difficult for people not to, you know, disrespect, you know, authority and rules and regulations and guidelines? And I had to tell you I didn't know because I don't always understand what I experience. I just go through it, I observe it, see it for what it is, and I keep it moving. Man, mm, 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 mm. Mr. Uh, the name is crossing my mind. You weren't there for a while. You, I mean, you weren't there for a long time. You weren't there for a minute. Um, the veteran, the veteran. I thank you for being there. I thank you for um, being a part of us when no one else could um, take care of the situation. Operation Hope came through, and we're so grateful to you for that. So right now, I'm going to cut it short, and I'm going to talk about all the people who have made Youngstown Community Center a great, wonderful place for me to work and be empowered and inspired by. There are going to be some people that I would love to include in this wonderful opportunity, but I will not because I will not buy into the energy that came from knowing you. All I can say 
is that I hope life has gotten better for you. I hope you have healed from what, you know, made you feel the way that you felt. Um, but being a nonprofit is a high and low position. You know, again, you can be liked today and disliked tomorrow. What are you going to do about it? Keep it moving. Keep it moving. There have been a lot of people in my life. And some of them I'm going to share stories about and laugh. And the others I'm just going to skip over and not cry. Because um, it's difficult when you can't be, you know, in the midst of joy and success and happiness and peace and love, you know. When you understand that you're dealing with, with lower vibrational energy and it creates that opportunity that um, causes and forces us to have to elevate to extreme higher dimensions. We're not dealing with the lower vibrations anymore. They, they don't exist. You know, so they're coming. Energy comes in the form of however you receive it. And I get it. I so get it. Um... But it's an experience from 2019. Oh, my God. I think June 10th, Isaiah and Ashley, the first two people that were actually in the building when I showed up. It, it's amazing how, you know, people and situations and things and when people put... Um, words on you and they speak things into existence for you that can either make or break you so I thank you Isaiah but most importantly I thank Ashley for putting those words of encouragement upon me at that hotel at the Hampton Inn when she suggested that I go and talk with the um, the board members of Youngstown Community Center. At that time, it wasn't even Youngstown Community Center, I don't believe. Peace and joy continues to move on. And the past is something that we go back and we remember. We never forget. We never forget. I know I'm not. Um, it's not even about turning the other cheek or anything like that. It's about being victorious in the position and the seat in which you hold, no matter nonprofit, LLC, sole proprietor, never stepping on toes that um, was there prior to, always giving that ultimate respect, always giving that um, accolade of respect, always giving that understanding that everyone is different and to force someone to move into a position because they feel that, you know, this is better, this is more professional. No, absolutely not. Because for some professionalism is narcissism, narcissism underneath the cloak of who they are. But if you come as real as you are, there is no other agenda. There is none. And I guarantee you, we've been so ultimately empowered and inspired when we didn't know where the next meal was coming from. We didn't know in our nonprofit where the next bill was going to get paid from. So I'm going to talk more on our next video about the new and improved year 2022 because I've hit 2019, 2020, we've hit the pandemic, we haven't even really talked about um, the day program and all its participants. I got to go back to 2020 after everything was shut down and give a shout out to the senior program that denied working with us because um, we wouldn't shut down for COVID. And they denied working with us, but we kept going. 
We kept going. So I send a shout out to that organization. You know who you are. And um, I just really feel like it made us stronger because to continue to work to get seniors to come to the community center for birthday parties, for, you know, just little small events that nobody would ever know anything about. That's what we've been doing, even with the rejections, like the black sheep, like the, you know, child that no one wanted. <laughs> That's what we do. So I thank you so much for listening to the Chronicles of a nonprofit. I have so many more stories for you, years and years of them. So if you like this, click the like button and you will receive more of these videos just like this. And I just want to say thank you. Peace and stay empow empowered.